Hey guys, welcome back. Drip and Farm for Poverty. I'm your host, Drip Coach, dropping knowledge bombs on all four shark related projects. And today's video going through the Rabi wallet installation. So definitely uh, something to look into because these guys continue to develop and innovate with the Web3 wallet. Um, and it's way more Safu and way more user friendly, way more features than MetaMask. So uh, MetaMask had its heyday and I think Rabi shines through. Um, and they are Safu 100%, but definitely do your own research. They've been around for quite some time. They are from the companies and teams that brought us the bank. And, um, there are many, many features that outshine what MetaMask does. We're going to cover a little bit of them and show you how simple it is to actually integrate this. So for starters, they have multi-chain transactions. So Rabi Wallet smoothly handles the multi-chain transactions without needing to switch between networks manually. So I'm going to show that later with, um, Binance and Avalanche and show you how easy that is. Also, when you sign transactions, Rabi will inform you of what type of transaction is needed and the estimated balance change in your token allocation before you actually make the transaction. So I'm gonna show you that as well. They give you this cool pre-sign check and error validation. So it tells you if a contract is Safu or not, or if it's been exploited in the past or whatever the case may be. And they give you super details. What I was just talking about of exactly what you're signing for. Um, they also have automatic network integration. So once you install Rabi wallet, um, you will automatically get access to, I think it's like 44 EVM chains. Yeah, here we go. 44 different EVM chains. So you don't have to add the actual network manually and risk putting in the wrong one. It's already there by default. Why it hasn't MetaMask done that? I don't know, but they're dropping the ball. So we should move over and, uh, they also do not require manually switching between networks for each app and it integrates holding on all chains and displays them in a compact folio portfolio so once i install this you'll be able to see um, all the assets on different chains and there's a couple other features but i'm not going to go into everything in detail and of course most importantly they support the different hardware wallets as well as even multi-sig wallets like gnosis and kobo so Let's get straight into it. So for starters, the only place to get it, there is not an app. Be careful out there. If someone sends you a link for an app, there is no Rabi wallet app for mobile. It's only for your uh, Chrome or Brave. I use Brave and even Firefox and Edge is not available yet. So come straight to Rabi.io, Rabi.io. Download for Brave. I'm going to do that now and add to Brave. Uh, also, something to note is that I think MetaMask has 10 million users. Rabi's just now sitting at 50,000. So they got tons of room to grow. So it's going to be awesome to be a part of that. And supposedly, uh, MetaMask is supposed to be adding a token, but they haven't yet. And if you've been using it, you should still get access to that token. So maybe Rabi will beat them to the punch. So I would recommend uh, at least installing Rabi and using it because one of the features that a lot of airdrop communities do is they airdrop tokens based off of you know, people who have been using their platform and participated within their networks and stuff. So definitely be on the lookout. I'm making this up. I have no idea if Rabi would be doing that, but they are much better already than MetaMask. So I could see that happening as they start to get more and more adoption and they got plenty of room for growth. All right, so access all dApps, self-custodial, get started. So here's what you will see when you first get started. So you can import directly from your MetaMask you got to create a password on here, just like you do on um, the other ones. So I've just created that myself. So we'll go next here. And then you can import with your MetaMask seed phrase. So if you don't know how to do that, then you need to go and check that out or you can import with a private key. So I'm going to do my private key for my sub, uh, one of my sub accounts first, just to show you how easy this works. And I'll also do it for the ledger. So I have pasted in my private key from MetaMask for one of my sub wallets it says here, yes, it will be stored locally on your browser and only accessible to you. So remember, this is a hot wallet. So make sure that you have your virus software up to date and you're not connecting to any uh, questionable sites. There it is imported successfully and it's called private key one. That is the public address. So I'm going to change this to what I have in MetaMask, which is drip sub one and hit done wait that didn't take check mark done there we go i have my drip sub one account already integrated and this is what your dashboard will look like so right now we are on the ethereum blockchain and you have 
the ability to swap and it uses a couple different dexes to swap from. Um, you can send, of course, to other locations, just like you do a MetaMask, receive funds. This is really cool. You can actually top up gas. Let's just switch over to BNB because I don't use ETH. So you can actually click on the amount of gas you want to add, and then it will ask you for the token you want to utilize. So you got to have other tokens in your balance to do that. And it's a default amount. Can you do less? No. So it's automatically a default amount and they charge a $4 service fee. So I think the way this works is that they are allowing you, even if you don't have the gas or have um, yeah, gas in your wallet, they are use a backend service. Maybe they have a um, Dex or something like a pool and then they're charging you that fee because they're kind of front loading your gas, so to speak. So I haven't used this, but that is a cool feature to have built in. What else we got here? Uh, you can whitelist addresses. I saw that somewhere as well, but let's take a look at the actual um, uh, drip network. So when we come on over to drip network, what you'll see, I'm going to show you this. It should pop up. Uh, let's go back here first. It should ask to um, become the primary. There it is. MetaMask is in use and Rabi is banned. Do you want to flip? So that means that you want Rabi to be the primary and for MetaMask to be banned. Banned just means it's not going to be used. So you see right now when I hit connect wallet, it says MetaMask. But when I click this little icon here or this little toggle to flip, it says it has been detected that you are, you also installed MetaMask. Your current default wallet is MetaMask. Please confirm you want to flip to use Rabi as your default. Hell yes. Let's move to Rabi. Confirm. There we go. It's got the little Rabi icon with the little darked out cat now. So now when I come up here to connect, let's refresh. It should actually show uh, the Rabi wallet icon instead. There it is. Rabi wallet. Connect. It's connecting and it should show my sub wallet account. So it's asking me what chain is this on? So we're gonna switch over here to BNB. That is of course the chain that Trip community is on. And there's my balance, everything's there. Nice and Safu. So shows you what's in your wallet based off of tokens. And also what's cool in here is it's actually showing, so you see this $1,500, it's actually showing the DeFi balance. So it's actually showing how much of available drip that this payout would be at these prices. So that is pretty cool. That's what D-Bank normally shows you, but now you can see it right there on your wallet. And if I had any NFTs, that would show up here. And then all the tokens that I have in this wallet. Now, if you take a look over at Avalanche, so if I were to connect my wallet here, I gotta disconnect my other wallet and connect, we gotta pick MetaMask again. So it is going to automatically ask me, do I want to connect to this site? And I'm going to say yes. And this site is on Avalanche. So I can actually connect here. And I am now on Avalanche. Switch to Avalanche for the current DAP. When I come back over here, I'm still connected with this. So I can actually interact right here without doing any other switches. That is awesome. So um, that automatically is just a time saver. And then you see here, it does a pre-sign check, no balance changes, tells you what it could cost, no risk found, all that good stuff. So it's really, really cool. I think it has all the features plus some that uh, you would want in DeFi. So highly recommend that you come over here and install this, take a look at it, test it out. Again, do your own research. I believe it's Safu from what I've seen. It's been out for quite some time. I'm not the first one in the Drip community to cover this. Uh, Ray pitched it, Drip Nomads had it for a while. Even Legacy 7 Crypto had it like almost a year ago. So this is definitely an old uh, wallet that the community has been using. So I'll urge you to take a look. And just for transparency, if you wanna do the ledger, it's actually quite simple as well. So I come up here to um, address and hit this little add wallet icon. And I'm gonna say connect hardware wallet because that's what I have, right? Then I'm gonna say ledger, yes, of course. Then it's gonna take me to this screen, ask me to unlock, so I'm gonna do that. And then now it is gonna search for the addresses associated or on this ledger. I know for a fact, this is my only one on the ledger. Um, anyone in the group out here watching, tell me what these are. I actually don't know where these addresses come from. Are they average addresses that I've interacted with? Are they addresses that actually are on the ledger? Because I thought the ledger only had one address. 
So I haven't read too much about my ledger after I got it initially, <laughs> but curious of what these are, because they can be um, added, but I don't, I don't know what they are. So I'm not going to add them, but this is my main ledger wallet address. So I'm going to call this, uh, I think I called it main and then I'll leave the ledger there because I do have two ledgers. So I'm going to hit that. And I think you just click the checkbox here. And that is literally it. Once you hit that little toggle, it's automatically added to your uh, ledger. I went ahead and clicked the hide information on change just to see what this showed. So it's showing these balances of these other wallets. But again, I don't actually know what those are. Clearly they do not belong to me. So maybe it's coming from the ledger database or something strange. I don't know, but I do know that's mine. So I'm not worried about it. And if I go up here to um, the uh, portfolio, there it is, main ledger one, and then I have drip sub one. So right there, if I want to use that wallet, come over to drip community, do a refresh over here. It actually already did. I don't even need to do that. That was pretty amazing and much faster than I'm used to. So it already showed my new balance on that account, but just again, for simplicity's sake, let's connect, show that, and this should all be connected through the ledger wallet. So let's test it out here. We got a max, we're gonna deposit and see what it says. So using the ledger that I just imported, let's see how easy this actually is. So showing me, this is cool to see the transaction, five drip, uh, balance change. I'm depositing into this contract. I know that that's the right contract. You can even view the actual raw data if you are curious about that. Um, no errors found. So let's proceed. And please sign on your ledger. And I see that right here. You can't see it, but review the transaction. Looks exactly the same way it does on MetaMask, except in sign. And it should be off to the races. Uh, transaction submitted. There we go. This creep up almost 20,000. So this makes a great video. Uh, doing a little bit of both. Let's see what it looks like. Um, can you, s I haven't seen transactions on the ledger side. I, I'm sorry, on the other. Uh, all right, I don't know where that's at right now. So I'm not gonna waste time with that, but I do wanna show you this. This takes you straight over to DBank and this takes you to the BSC scan. But more importantly, this right here, another one of the really cool features is the approvals that you have, you can revoke. So say for example, this unknown contract is probably some project that rug snowball, I definitely need to get rid of. Um, I can go ahead and say, select all and revoke. I can revoke these contracts right from here without having to go to unwrecked or anywhere else. That is pretty awesome. And this is over on Avalanche. So it's gonna send me that transaction. I'm gonna go ahead and approve that because I got Avalanche fees and that is done super fast. So that is really, really cool. And um, this is a quick way to clean up your, your wallet if you have any issues of, you know, old contracts, something like that, that you want to fix. So you come here and you can just look at the different ones. Um, right now it's looking at, oh, it's, it shows all, everything at one time. I didn't even know that. So Avalanche, it's in alphabetical order. Avalanche was first. Then we got Binance. Then I'm guessing, yep, Ethereum. Wow. So it's literally every uh, chain that you're associated with. So you come in here one day and clean up all the old unknown contracts. Um, make sure you have some gas to do so, but that would definitely keep your crypto safe. And one other thing that I think is really, really cool. I think it's this. Yes. So when you come look at your um, wallets, you can come in here and you can actually add to whitelist. So you add your password, you can add to a whitelist. So if you're going to be sending funds, to somewhere, I think it will automatically ensure that you're sending it to your whitelisted address is anywhere else. Um, you don't have to get approval for something like that. I'll have to do that later, but that is a cool feature built in on top of all the other stuff. So yeah, here it is. You can only send assets to whitelisted addresses. So that is a feature to add in initially, once you import this wallet or whatever, to make it even more Safu, you can add your whitelist of only the con the address that you interact with. So like for me, I got five sub wallets, put those on, turn this toggle on, and on top of having a hardware wallet, that should be another feature. And if you wanna add custom RPCs, like some of the other people do for Binance, you can do this as well. All you got to do is paste in the URL. So that's one UPC I know of. 
Then I can just paste that and then that's already in there. Super easy. So lots of really cool built-in features. Definitely recommend you take a look at it. Um, I didn't cover everything in this video, but it's already long enough. So um, take a look at this and do your research, of course. But you know the drill. If that added any value, smash that special special brother. I like, subscribe, comment down below. And until next time, lift it daily and achieve your impossible. See ya. Want to pay your in real life bills with crypto? How about send crypto directly to anyone with a bank account? Spritz Finance is a decentralized solution to be your own bank and connect your crypto earnings to real world bills and payments. They do not take custody of your assets and allow support on multiple blockchains and Web3 wallets. Sign up below using my referral link and you will get $50 back when you make your first $50 bill payment with crypto. Additionally, I will be using referral bonuses to airdrop, donate, or burn based on community feedback. Sign up now.